China has even in the past put out maps which claim the territories which are not China's, which belong to other countries. This is an old habit of theirs. It is not something which is new. It started in the 1950s. These are very much part of India. We are very clear what our territories are. This government is very clear about what we need to defend our territories. Just making absurd claims doesn't make other people's territory yours. Let me be very clear on that. One part of me is still amazed how long, how we put up with the situation till 2019. You want to see the change? Go to Lal Chowk. I mean, forget about everything else. Actually, we kept that state backward for reasons of uh, politics. I saw how the rest of the world used this issue to pressurize us, to damage us, to, to tighten us <coughs> when they wanted. The article, you know, what yes. we did with Article 370, I would definitely put it because I think it has long-term, uh, you know, benefits uh, and, and the rest of the world accepts it. It is only we who had this fear ki ne ne pata ne dunya kya kahi. This year, it is special for two reasons. One, the world today in 2023 is a far more complicated place than it has been for a long time. The second reason is, in such a situation, who can step forward and try to find a middle ground? So which country is in a position today to address both divides, to find a, can help find a common ground, help search for a solution. And such a country, you know, should not be, just be neutral. It should also be a country that commands respect, which has had achievements to its own credit. And that country happens to be India. It is unique today because the global situation is unique and the G20 presidency is today unique. And frankly, what we have done in the last 10 years is also unique. We are doing our presidency in a truly global manner. Those who are global south know inside that they are global south. China. Let me repeat. Those who are really global south know really inside that they are global south. Global south is partly a reflection of development, obviously a reflection of income. A reflection of history, you know, what happened to them 100 years ago, 200 years ago. But at the end of the day, Global South is a place in the heart. You have to behave like Global South to be part of Global South. A global South is, are those who, whatever their limited resources, they will do things for other countries because there is that feeling today uh, that... Uh, we are, we are, uh, you know, part of a family that your problems are my problems. I don't think India should be depicted as a China plus one. I don't think you're being fair to yourself. I would say countries will invest in India. We ourselves will invest in India when we actually uh, uh, show our capability, our competitiveness, we create the infrastructure, we have the human skills, we have the institutional uh, basis to become a modern economy which is contributing more to the uh, global economy. People will, the world will come to India, not because India is a China plus one, but because India has the capacities and the capability, the international credibility and the capability which will make us a good destination and I think that is happening. Uh, I think the world is getting more multipolar. I don't think today global decisions are any more a prerogative of a small group, nor are they a prerogative of two countries. Even before the Ukraine conflict started, we actually felt that the Security Council no longer uh, authentically represented the entirety of the membership. Yeah, I think the members of the UN themselves have to wake up to the realization that the longer they put off reforms, the less representative the Security Council is. Uh, frankly, the less the credibility of the UN would be. People will then go and do things outside the UN. Not necessarily in the G20, they'll go and do it in other ways. Already by the time we reached uh, retreat, there was a little bit of talking had started. Chandrayaan is going to happen, landing is going to happen. By the second day, 
already even in the BRICS, the talk had shifted to Chandrayaan. Speech which President Ramaphosa gave, and it was like the Chandrayaan was like a collective. You know, everybody felt part of it. You know, they they. In fact, he said that he said, you know, by I'm going to sit next to Prime Minister Modi, and I hope some of it will rub off onto me. <laughs> so that that kind of uh, sentiment was very strong and. In fact, at one stage, I remember there was a long table, a U-shaped table. Maybe 150 people were sitting there, and people just spontaneously got up. So, Prime Minister actually had to go the length of the table, individually shaking hands, accepting. You had that sense in the BRICS that this was not just India's achievement. That very large part of the world was with us. That I mean, as. Uh, President Ramaphosa said, "You know, your achievement we see as our achievement."